Well, g'day folks. Uh, welcome to Lake Yildon. Over my shoulder is um, the impoundment in northeast Victoria and that's the destination of our next adventure. So I'm catching up with a couple of mates at the little township of Alexander and uh, we're going to fish for cod for a couple of days and see how we go. But it's a beautiful part of the country so let's come along for the ride. Lake Eildon is nestled between the two rural towns of Mansfield and Eildon. The dam was constructed back in 1915 to supply drinking water, irrigation and hydroelectricity. The dam is the equivalent of six Sydney harbours when full and the fishing is our target species Murray Cod, Carp, Brown and Rainbow Trout and Golden Perch or Yellow Belly. Arriving at the fishing shack Sunday afternoon, we decided to um, put one of the boats in the water and do a evening session. Unfortunately, there was no fish caught, but the sunset was absolutely magnificent. So it was dark by the time we got in the ramp and uh, the trip home was interesting, dodging everything from wombats, kangaroos, foxes, and about everything in between. The next morning we were up fairly early and on the water only to find that the wind had really picked up and it was going to make fishing conditions quite difficult today. But we're on the water and uh, we're in with half a chance. So the plan was to um, motor across the lake and try and find uh, some sheltered bays and start the day by throwing some lures around and come about lunchtime, uh, soak some bait. Well, lunchtime day one. Um, it's been very windy today. I've just found a nice little secluded bay. It's a, a lot calmer, and uh, someone's had a worse day than I have by the looks of this uh, half a canoe um, on the tree. But I've uh, just pulled up for a bit of lunch. It's um, it is still quite a nice day out of the wind. It, um, I'm not sure if the camera will pick it up, but there's a few little white caps um, out in the main lake. But um, I'll uh, prop here for a little while, have a bit of lunch and um, see if I can get something on bait. So I've got a couple of baits in, chicken and uh, some cheese and we'll uh, see if we can rustle up something but uh, not a bad little spot for lunch. Well, just motoring up on Stephen and he's caught the first cod of the day. Oh, he's a nice little one. A big buff head on it. And the fish. I've got to be happy with that mate. Just hang on, I'll get a photo with my camera. <laughs> Did you pick it up on the live scope or? Yeah, I, was, yeah, I, looked, I just pulled up. I've thrown that in the water. I've got to throw another hook on the other one. I've stuck it in the bucket. I've been to hook on the bottom snag. And um, what I was just I took the live scope on and just have a look around and let's look around and then so I'm swimming out from under the tree and I'm like, oh, I'm going to get that, I've got to show you what they look like. Yeah. 
That's what they look like. Good stuff. How good's that? All right, it's got a bit late in the afternoon, so it's uh, about quarter to three. So I'm just going to pepper this little bay with a spinner bait. I've got a yabby soaking on my other line. afternoon is, uh, hasn't produced much. I did get a um, bit of a hit on some cheese while I'm trying to get out of the wind but the wind just hasn't let up. Um, it's uh, been pretty relentless. It's been very very difficult to fish but uh, we'll keep persisting. We'll uh, bay hop back to the ramp um, over the next couple of hours and see how we go. Alright, just trolling the swim bait around and something's taken it it's got a bit of weight to it and it's a little cod nothing to ride home about but let's get him in the net oops a bit of plastic He's a little ripper. He's nailed that swim bait. I'll get that out. Sorry about the camera work. Well, I can't really see where I'm pointing. Anyway, let's get this sorted. Come here, little fella. And there he goes. How cool is that? The evening session was a real grind. Wind still not letting up and fishing was very, very difficult. We fished till it got dark and uh, made our way back to the ramp and then back to the shack for some dinner. Well, that was our first full day on the lake. Two cod, uh, no stonkers amongst them, but uh, almost 12 hours on the water, a lot of casting, a lot of water covered. Um, very, very windy, um, as I've said earlier. But look, we've got two cod in the boat, and um, Kenny's just joined us, uh, so he'll be out with us tomorrow. So let's have a look what tomorrow brings. But um, in the meantime, we're going to have a bit of tea, a couple of beers, and hit the hay. Day three, just had our coffees, throwing a bit of gear in the boat and heading down to the ramp. It's a lot better day today wind-wise. Um, it's a little bit cloudy, but uh, it doesn't look like there's a breath of wind. So um, we'll see what it's like down on the lake. But um, let's spend another day out there and see what we can get for you.
Well, we're on the lake and it's a vast contrast to yesterday. It's um, very pleasant, a um, little bit of breeze, which is lovely. Uh, Stephen's dropped a fairly decent fish first up this morning on a lure. Um, so that's a good sign. Uh, obviously a little bit hungry. I'm just throwing a large swim bait around and seeing what we can entice from the depth. But the water clarity is, is fantastic. I can watch the lure basically when it hits the water all the way up to the right almost. And, um, but yeah, beautiful, beautiful day. Just a bit of cloud to take the sting out of the sun. So I just pulled up for a bit of bait fishing, um, just for a bit of a relax and uh, enjoy a bit of the scenery. So what I thought I'd do, I'd go through my theory on lure fishing in, in empowerment. So this stands for any empowerment. So my theory is the higher the sun, the lower your lure. So in the morning when the sun's nice and low, you want your lure nice and high. So the surface lures. So one of my favorite is the um, Ballista Tremor. These come in a, a variety of different colors. So I've got that and that's the Ballista Hogback. Um, that's another good, good little one. Um, I don't think when you're surface fishing, color really, really matters. It's just the, the action and the, um, the sound it makes. The only reason I like a white one, especially around the rivers, is there are a lot of cockatoos and corellas around rivers. So something like that now up here um, along the banks, fish might think it's like a little baby cocky that's fallen out of the water. So that, that might do um, well. So as the sun's coming up, your lures start going down. So I've been fishing here in Eildon with some swim baits. So that's a, a gantrel, so unweighted gantrel. Um, just sort of subsurface, just below the surface, you know, a metre or so. And then as the sun keeps coming up, you start putting a few weights on. So a bit of chin weight on, um, on your lure, on your swim bait, and that gets it down. Also, you can use deep diver, that, that sort of thing as you're going down. So as the sun's right overhead, so your deep diving lures or your, your spinner bait, something like that, that's a, a bigger one to use in the empowerment. So spinner baits, let them drop to the ground um, at the, the bottom of the, the water and then slow retrieve, get those big blades thumping in the water and that should attract the fish. And then conversely, as the afternoon rolls on, the sun's going down, well, you start bringing your lures up again. So back back to your, your chin-weighted um, swim baits, your, your deep divers, those sort of things, and then um, back up to your unweighted gantrels. And then as the sun's going down, that just that nice um, magic hour, you know, back to your surface baits. But in saying that, just mix it up during the day. Like, um, there's nothing wrong with flicking. If you, you know, see a, a nice snag, flick a, a surface lure out, or, you know, that, that deep diver, you know, in the, in the dark sort of thing. So just mix it up. But that's, that's my theory. Whether it works or not, I don't know. Um, but I, I think um, that's what I've been trying. We've got one so far, but we'll see how we go. All right. Master Chef Kenny Hewson. Not at all, mate. Look at that. When you get food poisoning, you'll you'll delete it. <laughs> Yabby. And yep, I got him. Oh no! Oh. Just a mouthful of hamburger, and the ratchet went off on the on the rod on the boat, and I did feel him. And he's taken. Oh, not huge, but anyway.
Well, as you can see, it's raining. So that's uh, the end of today's session. And uh, just by the looks of things, I don't think we'll be out again today. She uh, looks like it's going to set in, unfortunately. But um, anyway, we gave it a fair crack. And uh, not more we can do. We'll go back to the shack. Get the heater on and um, probably have a couple of cold beers and uh, cook up a few yellow belly bites due to the fact that Kenny got a nice little yellow belly. So we'll get into it. So we knocked the fillets off the yellow belly and took the skin off them and turned them into some bite sized little pieces for our beer battered yellow belly. So we just diced them up into small portions. Bought some uh, vegetable oil up to temperature and our batter just consisted of two cups of self-raising flour and a stubby of cold beer. Um, this batter is better if you put it in the fridge for a couple of hours to cool it down. And our end result was some lovely beer battered fish bites. Well, like all good things, everything must come to an end. Uh, my trip to Eildon has been absolutely fantastic catching up with good mates so my trip ends here with a little bit of serenity um, apparently if I put the boat on the lake the faster you go the more you see uh, I'm gonna soak in some power lines up here and just enjoy the smell of two-stroke so from Bonnie Doon we'll say goodbye